a lot of DDoS. This week on ThreatWire. This past week, the CEO of Cloudflare reported that the company mitigated a record-setting DDoS attack. Cloudflare had been dealing with this large-scale DDoS attack since early September. The attacks targeted Cloudflare's customers in the financial services, internet and telecommunication industries, and more. The majority of the malicious requests stemmed from Vietnam, Russia, Brazil, Spain, and the US. Mostly using UDP on a fixed port, the attack aimed to overload the packet header processing to execute a layer 3 slash layer 4 or a network layer slash transport layer DDoS attack. Some of the attacks appear to originate from Mirotic devices, DVRs, and web servers. However, the team at Cloudflare believes that the origin of many of the high bitrate pings were from Asus home routers that were compromised using CVE 2024 3080. As a reminder, this CVE was given a CVSS score of 9.8 and allowed for authentication bypass on the router. But exactly how big was this DDoS attack, especially since they dubbed it the largest publicly disclosed DDoS attack in history? The largest attack Cloudflare mitigated peaked at 3.8 terabits per second. Throughout the month, though, many of the ongoing attacks exceeded 2 billion packets per second and 3 terabits terabits per second. And apparently the affected users had no interruption to their properties. Great job to the team at Cloudflare. Congrats on breaking a very unique record. In a continuation to the CUPS exploits that was discussed in last week's episode, new research has emerged about how the discovered flaws can be used to amplify DDoS attacks. Akamai researchers have recently disclosed a new attack vector using the common Unix printing system or CUPS that could be exploited to launch DDoS attacks. By leveraging exposed CUPS services on the internet, attackers can initiate the attack with just a single packet, and Akamai's Security Intelligence and Response Team, SIRT, found over 198,000 devices vulnerable to this flaw, with 58 thousand plus of those devices being particularly susceptible to DDoS abuse. The attack works by exploiting CUPS's use of the internet printing protocol and its handling of printer requests. Attackers can craft malicious UDP packets that direct a CUPS server to send large HTTP requests to a target system. These requests, padded out with nearly a kilobyte of data, can overload the target's network and consume significant bandwidth and CPU resources affecting both the target and the host's CUPS server. What makes this attack especially dangerous is how little effort it takes to carry out. Akamai notes that the attacker can commandeer vulnerable CUPS services in seconds at minimal cost and trigger a flood of traffic with high amplification rates. In the worst case scenario, a single packet could lead to an endless loop of requests, consuming massive amounts of bandwidth and potentially causing severe service disruptions. To make matters worse, many of the vulnerable CUPS servers are running outdated software versions, some dating back as far back as 2007, which makes them even more attractive to attackers. With the addition of the RCE vulnerabilities in CUPS, the potential for attackers to build botnets to further malicious purposes grows significantly. Akamai's research points to the importance of patching and removing vulnerable CUP systems, particularly in environments that no longer require printing capabilities. When Telegram changed their policy to begin complying with law enforcement requests, they created a bot page that can be contacted to get information about their compliance. Anyone can use this bot. This bot is said to be updated every quarter with information about their legal compliance. In a recent request of the bot from the team at 404 Media, the bot has reported that Telegram has begun compliance with law officials and has been giving out data about users to US-based law enforcement. Across 14 US law enforcement requests, Telegram has released the IP address or phone number of 108 users. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of October 7th, 2024. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much for your support. 
I was wondering, for those of you who don't get to see me write Threat Wire Mondays on my Twitch channel, would you like to see a vlog of my day-to-day -day when I actually write and record Threat Wire? I was brainstorming some content ideas this month for my personal YouTube channel and thought some people might be interested in seeing it. So please let me know in the comments below. If you want to find me online, as well as my YouTube channel, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.